What does it take to create a cohatch? Where does it start? Who's involved? What shapes the uniqueness of each location? That's awesome. In this series, find out the answers to all of these questions and get a behind the scenes look at the creation of a cohatch from start to finish. Hear from our founders as they share their process and motivation for everything they do and watch Cohatch Westerville come to life before your very eyes. This is Creating a Cohatch. If you've ever set foot in a cohatch, you were probably struck by the stunning beauty of the space, the unique architectural features, and the playful designs throughout. You might have wondered where the inspiration for such designs came from. And the answer is, it's actually quite thoughtful. We pride ourselves on not being this cookie cutter co-working space where everything looks the same and we just keep doing the same thing over and over again. The unfortunate part about that is that it takes us about eight months to two years to build any space because we do it with such intentionality. I mean, we start early on with meeting with the city management team and the economic development teams, figuring out how we can add value to what they're doing, part of their strategy. We meet with the historic society and figure out the unique things that happen at the, in that building. And we make sure that we actually build those things into things like our meeting rooms and other things so the history could live on. It's very important to us that we are respecting not only the neighborhood, but also the history of any location. And so we, we do quite a bit of research. We talk to people in the neighborhoods to make sure that we understand more about what life was like uh, when the building was last in use. And um, we go through each location and we, we look at what we can keep and what we can repurpose. Do you remember when we were walking around that space and looking at all those, some of those old things that were attached to the building and like the idea of looking at those, what the, the windows on the outside are, are at first glance they're like ominous and like they're barred up and you know they're pr to protect yeah, all the stuff that used to be in there. I remember Matt found out the idea of using those bars for like landscaping screens and growing vines and plants up around them when we were trying to work through how we're going to do fencing in areas and there's so many of them that would be cool to figure out how to use it maybe even a couple of different ways because I think I don't remember what we counted but there's a ton of those things. Yeah we wanted to use them on the inside the challenge with that is how heavy they are probably um, but we love using screens to separate areas so I think if we can it would be really cool to use that to create privacy for some of the co-working for areas sure. or divide some spaces up. What, uh, there were other things we wanted to say from the space too. So there were a bunch of those old metal doors where they, I'm assuming, yeah. used to keep weapons all locked up. The, the, like all the bullets and the ammunition. Yeah, I think they looked like safe doors. Yeah, there, there were a couple different, I think, levels of those doors. I think those rooms, I think, might have been called the blast rooms that were like eight inch thick mm -hmm. concrete that held all the actual bullets. Those doors, I think, were truly like safe doors. But yeah, I don't know. Would it be weird to use them on the restroom doors? That'd be awesome. <laughs> and even when we design graphics and in areas that are um, just more of the art of the space, creating elements that are um, paying a homage to the history, but doing it in a way that's not hit you over the head obvious, but it's kind of a fun way to um, get some ideas across and have them either be so hidden you don't even know and you have to like, find out through a story of what it means, or it's done in a very interesting, unique way that you just wouldn't think of, you know, something being done, you know, done in a way that links back to something about the building of the neighborhood, but just a subtle way that's um, just, a, just a fun way to approach it. What about the idea when we were going through this and, and realizing that there were literal trolleys on the streets years ago? Yeah. Years ago? Let's see, we have some of the historic inner urban passenger car, and there were so many of them, and they're all really different. It's kind of incredible that they had so many of these. The Westerville Historical Society, um, they have a great website where you can look at all of their photos, and yeah. you can search. And, I mean, they just have so many incredible photos on their website of all the different trolley cars, and I think it just... It's inspiration as far as font and typography. I think the shapes of these, yeah. um, the ideas of wheels, cables, like the mechanisms, it's uh, all these old trolley cars are 
so beautiful. I love the rounded feel on the inside. The like, not arches, but just the corners. It it creates a really interesting space and the windows inside they look like that too. We might be able to use that shape. There's there's that shape from the yes. stumbler, yes. the trolley. Burr could totally make that. <laughs> but yeah, this is a really easy way to bring in that arched shape in a corner without having to do Filling it in, yeah. in reality. It's cool how your eye just fills in the blanks. Mm -hmm. While Joel and Elizabeth are at work figuring out what unique details they want to include in the design, Terry and his crew are already making preparations for what they will come up with by tearing out old ceilings and wall coverings, which have been added over the years, hiding the character underneath. They can't do too much, though, until the layout and design have been finalized. I really enjoy the upfront part of planning and pushing around the walls and the rooms and, and solving the puzzle of a, of a co-hatch. Matt usually has a number of offices we're trying to hit based on a business uh, performa. So we always try to hit that um, and you know Matt always shoots high and we do our best to get there. But um, we have a kind of a, a ratio and proportion of how we do things, but it's really about how it lays out in the flow and where's the entry points and, um, and we look at several different ways to do that. And we have a few meetings to kind of flesh those out and get through it. Um, and then from there, it goes into um, looking at it in 3D. Um, we get a, a 3D model um, made that's essentially a white box model where we understand the massings and the space and we can walk through it and make sure that the architecture is right. Um, so while the architecture, once we approve kind of the architecture of it, that can start to get on the road of getting a drawing set while we are looking at the design of the space where that's finishes and graphics and furniture and all the stuff that makes a co-hatch a co-hatch. So going back to our starting point to make sure that we've achieved our goals, this is supposed to feel sort of speakeasy, private, like mysterious a little bit yeah. to reflect the days when this was the dry capital of the world, Westerville was, and kind of feel almost like you're walking into a different era almost. Right. Okay, so we definitely need a solid w yeah. old historic wood door. Yeah. I think if there's any, gla I like that you walk into the door and it's its own little alcove. And I, I think it's better to have that be glass than to have it be drywall, but I think it should be fluted glass or something yeah. that keeps the privacy. What about the glass reason. that we were talking about using in Circle Center? That's fluted, right? Oh, I don't remember. Remember the back, the back darker area? Do we have an actual spec for it? We can, it's under construction now. Yeah. can see how it turns out. So you'll get that look in coming down as you open that door with that being wood. We could even get one of those things where you can open like the cool speakeasy <laughs> through a door. Yeah, it's going to be whatever they have at Columbus Architectural Salvage That's probably. True. Yeah, and then from there, you know, several meetings again, obviously, to go through and get that all on the same page with everybody, and then it goes into final drawings and gets built. We all agree that it's perfect, and then we go back and we change it four more times. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs>